So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's um, Storyteller webinar. Hi, Scott. How you doing, mate? I'm very well, thank you, mate. How are you? I'm good. I'm, like you said, we've been chatting off camera, made sure that neither of us has melted. You can see that I haven't melted. I know that you're melting, <laughs> so we're not sharing your webcam in case they think that it's something scary. It's a there. very hot and sweaty Essex tonight, mate. I it won't is. lie. It is. I'm hoping that uh, all of you are joining us. Make sure you're nice and cool. I have the fan behind me in case I need it. Make sure you've got a nice cold drink because we've got a great hour ahead of you. Uh, tonight on this as well. Um, Scott, just before we get going, and for those people that might not be aware of you, even though they should be, quite frankly, uh, let's say a little bit about you and how we got you into, how you got into uh, the wedding business and obviously where you're at with the likes of Fuji and Fundy today, mate. Well, it, to be honest, it was a complete accident. Um, I wanted to photograph cricket and that's what I wanted to do uh, 15 years ago. And then I was working uh, at a pro lab and then a guy that worked for us started to come back on of uh, cruise ships told me all the stories and I thought you know what I quite fancy that so I got learned my trade on cruise ships came back uh, started working as a second shooter for, for a local photographer realized quite quickly that you know I wasn't too bad at doing it and then um, set the company up in 2006 and that is a very short synopsis of, uh, of what we've what we've been doing for the last 14 15 years I think we were lucky. I think we, when did we first meet? About two, about two years ago now, I suppose, isn't it? About two years ago, yeah. It was it was it was amazing. Though since then, my involvement with uh, Fundy's been amazing. I've uh, been on board with Fujifilm as one of their brand ambassadors for the last eighteen months, and that's been incredible as well. So I'm running a lot of you know things, product testing and workshops for them on, as well. It's it's been an, an amazing ride the last four years since since I started doing well at SWPP in the print comp, that's when it's really started to take off. So um, enter prints, guys, you, ne you never know where it's gonna take you. Well, I know that's part of, we're gonna talk about it tonight, and I've noticed, and I was pleased when you gave me a preview of um, of the presentation that I think you have shot probably my favorite wedding image of all time. I think you know which one I'm on about, but I'm not gonna say anything more yeah. because I know it's in your presentation. So uh, it is. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll talk about it then. Right, let's give you, let's give you the screen, mate. So it's, uh, I'm sending, making you the presenter. It should tell you to show your screen uh, and then I'll make sure that we're seeing the right one, let you know where we're at. Uh, let's go for uh, that one, I think. Yes, there we go. How about that? Perfect. Oh, yep, yeah. seeing it nice and clear. <laughs> right, so I'm going to get rid of my mug shot. Uh, guys, just as a reminder, I'm just quiet instead of the mute. My webcam, my webcam's gone. Right, uh, questions for Scott or myself to do with Fundy, please pop them through the question panel. I'll ask them where appropriate. Scott, mate, it is all yours. Thanks, guys. Uh, again, thank you for uh, taking time out on a, on a very warm Wednesday evening to come listen to me ramble on about fine art wedding portraiture. Uh, thanks to Jay and obviously Mark for giving me the opportunity and obviously Fundy Software for um, for their constant support. You guys are rocking it at the minute. So this is just a little, you know, 45 minutes on on how I take wedding pictures, really. It all started very differently um, back in 2004 was when I started working for somebody else. And I realized I wanted to kind of, you know, break away from uh, from the norm, really. I wanted to break away and just be different. I didn't want to be the standard photographer that, you know, just turns up, does the images. And before you know it, you're just kind of stuck in a rut. I'm, and I was very early on. I wanted to be, I wanted to be different. I wanted to, I wanted to be the best. I'm, I'm very competitive. Uh, I enter competitions an awful lot and I want to be the, I wanted to be the best. And I and was just shooting what I was shooting. Wasn't going to get me there. I was shooting stuff like this. Uh, you can see this is awful. Let's be honest, absolutely dreadful. Um, hopefully, no no one uh, signs out the webinar between now and uh, now they've seen this. But this is my first ever wedding. Uh, I think it's very very important to throw back and appreciate where you've come from. And those of you that have been shooting weddings for a few years now, I really really urge you to take a look at your first weddings and just realise, even if you don't kind of not that aware of it, if you look back at the weddings, if you've been photographing for even two or three years, you will notice the style change. And you'll notice that if you keep doing webinars and investing in yourself for training, you will get better. And as I said, this is my first ever wedding for the Edge Photography. So, you know, we've got awful lighting, posing. I've got a diffuse glow in there. It's just rubbish. I used to use flash for everything. Uh, I don't even know what kind of crop that was, but that's a full, I came out of camera like that. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is me and I'm not afraid to show it. You know, this is, it's not even sharp. Look, if it, those of you that uh, have got a good monitor, you can see that this image is not even sharp and I was knocking this out uh, for client work and they loved it. You know, back then, you know, it was getting me working, it was brilliant. 
that I was very aware that I was getting Colourpop. Who remembers Colourpop? This is amazing. So yeah, this is uh, something that obviously I don't do too much of anymore, if at all. Even if I'm asked to do Colourpop, I will advise against it because I think it would seriously, seriously date the, the wedding the wedding album or coverage, so I don't do it anymore. But back in 2005 and six, this was all the rage. And rugby scrums, I know Jay's a big Welshman, he appreciates a rugby scrum, and this is what I used to do for, for, for shots. So yeah, go figure. So the reason why I wanted to change is because in 2000, well, especially now in 2019, everyone that owns um, a good mobile phone or even an iPad, dare I say it, calls themselves a photographer. And we owe it to photography to, stand up and be counted i think we need to step away from the shots that i was i was taking there you know there was someone when i used to work at jessup's many many moons ago that bought an in quote a professional camera and because she had a professional camera she shot a wedding um and she thought she could do it because she had the right camera she didn't have a clue what she was doing uh shot the whole thing with a flash at one thousandth of a second now, those of you that know anything about flash photography realizes that it will not sync at that speed and she was shooting on film and she ruined the entire wedding but because she had a professional camera she thought she could do it so we really need to invest in ourselves guys and give ourselves training to make sure that we're giving our clients the very best so we can stand head and shoulders above the rest of the industry i also you know i value photography a great deal this is a, this is not just um uh, a job for me this is a passion I did a uh, recent podcast and I said that uh, they said about wedding photography. So oh, you see, you're a wedding photographer. I said, well, I, I guess I'm a photographer that shoots weddings. I like to photograph many, many things. Uh, you know, I shoot architecture, street, um, landscapes, you name it, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Uh, I've done corporate. So, but I value the craft of wedding photography and I really, really appreciate the fact that a lot of us that are shooting weddings week in, week out, it's very difficult to try and get this fine art portraiture in the short amount of time that we do have uh, on the wedding day itself. But and, you know, I valued myself, I valued uh, my art form and I wanted to be different and I wanted to step away from this kind of work here. I was, you know, this used to make me money guys, you know, and again, you know, without this type of shot, I wouldn't be where I am now, believe it or not, because it started me on the journey to where to where I am now. No, very no, very lucky to be talking to you guys. So, how do I do it on a wedding day? How do what do I look for uh, on a wedding day? I have four four things that I'm looking for, and if my brain doesn't switch off at all. So, these are the four things that I'm looking for every time before I hit the shutter. I'm looking for light. I'm looking for location. I'm looking for concept, and after all, I'm looking to nail the pose because without these four steps in photography, then there's no point. And you get these things out of order, and that's when you're going to start really noticing that your photography is not quite fitting. If you're going for a pose and you've got the light wrong, or the pose doesn't match the location, or the concept of the image, it's all out of kilter. I cannot stress enough, guys, look for light first. Whether you're looking for natural light, or you're looking, you're creating your own light like off camera flash. Um, I use rotor lights, I have Neos, so I'm, I'm crafting light uh, that way around, but I'm always, always looking for light. And further on down in presentation, you'll see some befores and afters of what I've been up to in the last sort of year, 18 months. So you can really kind of see what, no, that I'm, my light is my driving, is, is my driving force. So light, location, concept, pose. If you haven't written those down, guys, please, please write those down. And before you hit, if you've got weddings this weekend, think about those four steps there. So there are different types of light, obviously, different types of light that we can use, different types of light that I like to use. So we have direct light, side light, backlight, reflected and artificial. They're the main five sources of light that I actually use a lot on the wedding day. I would say number one and number two, direct and side light are my most common uh, lights I'm shooting with. Backlight every now and again, reflected light depends on, it, on the situation. And artificial light, that would be when I'm in doing the first dance or I am uh, in a dark venue. We have no, we have very, you no. Know, big castles here in Essex with very small windows so often I'm, I'm you know, putting the lights up just to give myself a little bit of a helping hand so that's when that comes in but this time I know today perfect example very very warm very very sunny direct light can be difficult to master people look up and think oh my god it's a clear blue sky what are we going to do guys we pose for it clear blue skies bright sunny skies nice strong light I believe should be a nice powerful pose it should be you know, turning the body away from the light, like most things, turning the face back in. Again, we've got the light, we've got the location. This is down on the headland, down in Cornwall. Very, very nice place. 
to photograph. Uh, and then we've got the the concept. You know, she's a bride. She's a very strong, independent woman. So I put her in a very strong, independent um, in pose. And then obviously the, we've crafted everything to match. So it always, it's all in sync. So we've got the light, location, concept and pose, and it all sits there quite nicely. Looking back, I probably could have put a bit more to the left. So she's looking into the image a little bit more rather than looking out of it. But you know, this was this, this was a couple of years ago now. So again, even for me now, I'm still learning the craft guys. You know, the day that you say, I've mastered photography, I know everything about it. It's a day you should sell your cameras. I'm a great believer in every day is a school day. And we are, you know, I'm still learning. Jared, the only she's still learning all the photographers anywhere in the world are still learning the craft again nice strong light nice strong pose again just kind of got them stood up on uh on a bench to cut the feet off but again i've kind of you could kind of this is a little bit backlit as well maybe but again the fujifilm cameras that i'm using they've got very good dynamic range so i can really draw out the shadows in any time of shot that i'm uh, that i'm trying to create so again light location concept pose i'm selling spreads in my wedding albums this was a spread in the wedding album so this was exactly how the spread looked so again spreads make me money I always charge extra for spreads. So if you're not selling albums, guys, start selling albums, start selling spreads. You'll make a ton more money that way. Uh, it's it, it's an amazing way to help increase your revenue moving forwards. Side light is my absolute favourite light to work with. My style of photography, those of you who've seen my work on Instagram uh, or Facebook or been to see me talk before, I like to craft light and it's a very soft light. It's a very easy way of, of photographing for me. Now, brides spend a fortune on their wedding dress and they want to show off the details, no matter how small, but they want to be showing that off. And I believe side light is a really good way of doing that. So here, this is in a, in a bar, in the venue. Again, I have no problem, guys, of turfing people out of a room or moving furniture or taking things off the wall. If the light is right, then that's where we're going to be photographing. It's going to be nice and simple, nice and straightforward. So we have one window source here on the left hand side. Again, we've got a soft light, so a very, very soft, elegant pose. So my, my pose is matching my light and the location and the concept. So we just, it's quite a, it's an open shot from here. And again, soft pose, body turning away, face looking back in. And you can pick up on the detail on, on the top of the dress there. Uh, and that's what the bride wanted. She spent a fortune on the wedding dress. So we did a very good job, I think, of, of showing all that off. Um, and again, if the light's good, please don't be afraid. No, politely, don't just go in and say, right, everyone out. Just politely ask for people just to say, look, guys, I've got an idea. Can I just please have this corner of the room? Or can I just please, you know, move, take the furniture? There's nothing more funny than to, in a bride's house in the morning to walk into a front room and you see uh, the pocket of light right where the sofa is and say, mum, I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to pull that sofa out. And the look of horror when she sees all the dust bunnies underneath the sofa is hilarious. So, yeah, so the reason I do that, the first thing I do in going to any room is I generally turn all the lights off because and that which obviously really upsets the makeup artist. But what I'm looking for is pockets of light like we have here. So go into the room, guys, and just turn the light off and just see what this natural light is, is, is coming from. Again here, this is a side light. This is actually lit by two windows. The main source, obviously, on the right hand side here with a little bit of the kick coming from the left. And again, this is soft light, soft pose. This was a shot for the hairdresser. This was actually in my fellowship panel a couple of years ago. Well, so a few years ago now. But it's a really good demonstration of how we've used just two windows to make it look like we've got a studio. And it's just light sources, guys. It's exposing for the highlights and again, using the shadows and lifting out in Photoshop or Lightroom and creating a very, very soft pose for very, very soft light. It's, it's a beautiful way to photograph. Again, detail in the back of the dress. I don't know how good your screens are, guys, but I can assure you there is detail in the back of the head. Even that dark spot there, there is detail there. And this is a great shot for a portfolio shot for the hairdresser. Again, it's really, really good and important to get in with other suppliers, especially in this day and age of social media. They'll tag you, you tag them. Everyone's happy, everyone's on to a winner. And it's that way that we're really going to help build build yourself and build your brand. A kitchen. I can tell you that the smell of bacon sandwiches taken during this shot was amazing. So again, the best light for this shot was in the kitchen. Um, they lived in a, a very nice house, but obviously new houses here in Essex aren't that big. Uh, there's lots of little rooms. So there was a lot going on in the living room. So I turned and I saw this light coming in in the kitchen. So the breakfast bar is just to the right hand side. So what I did, again, a soft pose for soft light, 
where I position the bride there, it's framed nicely with the frames there on the wall. And it's just kind of leading your eye into, into the bride. Again, a nice soft pose, delicate. I cannot stress enough, on the wedding day, again, brides love their dresses. And for a lot of the brides that we're photographing, they love the back of the dress. It's really, really important to photograph the back of the dress because it's often overlooked because of the veils there. And everyone's looking at the, the, at the front, and the detail, the lacing, the beading, you name it. But the back of the dress is a really, really important shot. So I can stress, you, know, you really should try and get that in, uh, involved as well. So backlight, again, this is a really good way of uh, putting texture and putting layers into the images that we're taking. Again, I generally expose the shadows here. So what happens when you're exposed to shadows is you get this layering of light. The light will just wrap around. So I've exposed for the bride space here. Obviously, it's a cluttered room, uh, busyness of a wedding day, but I actually quite like it. It tells a story. Nothing is perfect at this point on the wedding day. This is just a, uh, a generic grab shot of a bride getting ready. And I wanted to include the fan, the veil, the the bag on the back, all the stuff on the on the bed because it's again we're storytellers guys. This is part of the story. I can't say to the bride, right, okay, just stop there a minute while I clean the bed. This is going to take four or five minutes to clean the bed. The dress will be done at that point. We're already running late, so just guys, just get the shot, tell the story. But as you can see here, the window, the one source of light here is from the back, and we have one layer and two layers. So the the bridesmaid is one layer, the bride is two layers. You can see the the light just wraps around. It's absolutely gorgeous. So exposed for the shadows at this point, guys. It's really really important to get that get, get the shadow detail um, perfect. Another shot. This is in Italy. Um, again, exposing for the shadows, which is walking out to get a taxi. Um, I love the depth and layers of this image as well. It's really just looking like she's walking into, I don't know, heaven maybe or, or somewhere. It's just a beautiful, beautiful shot. And because I've exposed for the shadows, what you can't see is the family of five waiting for a taxi just in front of her. Because if I'd exposed for the highlight, you'd have seen all of that in the front. So again, it's a really good way of masking things and you know, using Photoshop. I could have brought all that white out and just had her standing there in, in a, by herself. But I like the tunnel effect. I like the back of the dress shot. And so it, again, it's a nice storytelling image, guys. Backlight, and this is when we start using artificial lights. This is kind of two, two um, types of light source in, uh, in one. So obviously DJs, spend a lot of money, sometimes many thousands of pounds on their disco lights. So I always go and speak to DJs and say, how are you going to light the first dance? Because one, I'm lazy. I don't really want to get my lights out from the back of the car if I don't have to. And two, their lights are generally better than mine anyway. So a quick five minute conversation with the DJ. We just turn all the other lights off on the booth, uh, on the on the, on the the totes at the back. You just had two spotlights on the dance floor. You worked out roughly how tall the bride and groom were by using myself as a dummy and 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 uh, making sure the bride and groom stand in the center of the dance floor. And then we're still using artificial light and backlight. So again, but this time I've exposed for the highlights because I wanted to create that little bit of a depth um, with it within the, the image as well. So I wanted to create a bit more of a silhouette, but not too much of a silhouette where it's just going to be a bit blocky. I wanted to, again, see the drum set in the background, see the DJs in the background, see the lights in the background. So again, we just want to layer the image. So this is where I would expose for highlights. Uh, it's a lovely first dance picture. And I think, again, it's another spread image, guys. Again, sell spreads. It's a really good way of making some money. And finally, it's a really good tool and for, of doing that and, and up, getting a lot of upsells on your wedding album. So we go into artificial light. I, so the artificial lights that I, that I use, I have a low ID light, which is a tungsten balance um, light, which is which comes with a, a battery that weighs the size of, uh, weighs them as much as, as a car. Uh, it's really heavy to, to, to carry. I have an ice light, which I use every now and again. Uh, I've very recently at uh, TPS, I bought a Photix little M180 light, which I use a lot now for, for prep and first dancing. They're brilliant. Again, you can you can change the uh, you can change the, the white balance there, go from full daylight to function really, really quickly. Uh, and I've got the uh, the uh, Neo ones, uh, Rosa lights, they're fantastic. This is the shot we used with the low light. Again, we used a uh, manual white balance here because tungsten light is obviously very orange. So we've just used a manual white balance, and which and at this point of the day, turn the entire sky this gorgeous color. That is pretty much off camera. If you want to see the raw file, I'm more than happy to show it. You will see my very good friend Lee Havrill just off to the right, who was holding the light for me, uh, which we've obviously photoshopped out. But generally, this is how it came off camera, guys. Again, I can't stress enough to get things right as much as you can in camera. One, it gives you less editing time to do when you're back in the office. And two, with less editing time, on a day like today, you can spend more time down the pub with your friends. And that's all we're here for, guys. You know, we want to try and make this job as easy as possible. And if you can get things right in camera, then by all means, do that.
again using the same light here um, again we just match the temperature now I've kept it on a on a tungsten on a auto white balance from the camera and we just match the um, the the white balance in with the light coming off the lull in with the scenery at the background to get this nice shot of uh, the Kiss Pavilion this is again much to the fore. This is the combination of disco lights and my Lowell light. So you can see that the two lights on the right hand side there, that doesn't have any impact at all on this image. But the source of light we have here is just to the bride's right. And that is actually my assistant, Karen. Uh, she's holding the Lowell ID light and she's, I'm shooting into that light. I want the silhouette. I want the detail of the veil. I want to see a little subtle bit of dress and a bit of their expression, a bit of, you know, you can tell they're happy. There's a room of, of 140 people watching this first dance, but I've used a 56 mil lens. I've shot it at 1.2, uh, which is 85 mil equivalent in full frame. And I've just cut every single person out. I've just wanted to show the bride and groom at the most intimate moment in front of 140 people. And by exposing it right, by using the camera right, by using the, uh, the depth of field correctly, I think we've achieved that quite nicely. Off-camera flash, I don't use a lot of off-camera flash, but I was very fortunate um, last year to be, uh, work for Fujifilm and we had the run of the mill with the Profoto flash gear. I had all of it, literally all of it that I could have used and never done it before. So I thought, well, no pressure. We'll have a little test and see what we can do with the uh, off-camera flash. Um, and we did, we did this kind of sh shots with it. So basically what we did here, we had uh, a B1 behind the door to the right, an A1 just behind the door to the left, just giving the dress a little bit of a kick. So it made it look like there was a, a window light coming in from there, guys. I can assure you this was a crystal, um, crystally dark, crystal dark, it's not even making any sense, a wonderfully dark chapel in the center of a building in Lisbon. There was not one window source here, but it made it look like uh, natural daylight from there. And again, just a little bit of fill, um, at the front here, in the front of the um, the archway there, just to give a little bit of context there. So again, off-camera flash can be done very beautifully. I do not do it on a wedding day, quite simply. I haven't got the skill set to do it as well as someone like Chris Chambers, who I believe is an absolute master of off-camera flash. I can't do it as well as him. I get frustrated, therefore I, I just don't do it. I must prefer using uh, LEDs, but I thought I'd give it a try. Again, same setup, just with the groom here. And it's just, again, it's a nice way of just kind of exposing for everything. You can see a little fill um, in the in the uh, archway, and but the focus, you drop, you're drawn straight into where the groom is from there. So again, off-camera flash done well, can be done beautifully. I just don't have the skill set to do it on a wedding day. Reflected light, uh, those of you who don't have reflectors, again, I urge you to get a reflector. Um, you can get some tri-grips, you can get some six-foot reflectors. There are some really, really good ways of adding light to an image. This is one of my favorite shots using a reflector. This is um, a shot that came second at SWP Peach Print Comp a couple of years ago. We have two light sources here from the right off a building. You can see the very high key light on his, le on his left hand side and we used a reflector. Now, I didn't have my reflector with me on that day, but what I did have was a bride with a big white wedding dress, which was as good as a reflector. So I got her to stand just out of shot and that was enough just to kick some light into his right hand side, our left just to give me help with that exposure and it, it came out quite well. So guys, if you don't have a reflector and you want to shoot the groom alone, just use the bride. She's a big, big, big reflector, big white dress, get her to stand there, use that. Um, I've done it a few times now. Now, obviously you have to word it in a certain way, uh, but certainly you don't want to be saying, hey, just you know, stand there, you're big enough to be a reflector. Definitely don't say that. Just say, would you mind just coming a little bit closer? And then that way you're gonna, she's gonna help out without even knowing it. This was used uh, with reflectors. This was um, a beautiful venue in Suffolk. Two reflectors here. Again, I've exposed for the highlights, not to lose the highlights in the window. So I've had to, you know, use my reflectors to lift some light into the couple there. Two reflectors just out of shot, just bouncing some light back in. And again, it's created this very, very nice um, exposure on the couple there. And this is my first big award winner, SWPP in 2014. It's won the wedding classical category at their, at their annual print comp in London. So this was, it was definitely worth a setup and definitely worth, definitely worth doing. So there's no excuses, guys. There's no excuses anymore. If you kind of apply what I've kind of gone through there, uh, to your, to your business and to your, the way you shoot in and just think about it, light, location, concept and pose, and really just trying to think about it. Um, from a different point of view, without being patronising, that's thing I want to do is sit here and patronise you, but just think a light differently. Don't think we can't, I can't put a bride there, I can't do this, I can't do that. Just think about it differently. Uh, before we go on, Joe, any questions coming in, mate? Anything coming through so far? Uh, we definitely have questions for you, pal. Yeah, I didn't, want to, didn't want to break your flow. Um, that's all right. 
Uh, right, let's. Uh, they're not in any particular order, mate. So uh, let's. I'll just go from the top to bottom. Um, group shots. I tend to. Oh, hang on a minute. I've gone too far because it's about spreads as well. Uh, okay, so you talked a lot about spreads. Let's just be clear because a few people asked. You mean like a double page spread in an album, mate? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, two pages, one spread. Brilliant. Because uh, this will tie into the question that uh, comes in next because a few people asked that. Um, so I've answered it in the question panel, but I thought we'd address it with everybody. So um, I often find that when I'm doing the family groups, um, I miss out on that double page spread. It, top tips for remembering to do it. Does that make sense? On, a, on what for, for for group well, shots, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. Just, just try and just try and, and I, I always try and shoot between eight and twelve group shots, which is enough for a spread generally. Um, I would generally do immediate families. Uh, and stick eight on a spread and I'll do all the bridal party and I'll do all the boys and all the girls. That's another spread. There's two spreads there that you can generally try and do. I, I, I'm not a fan of putting out of overloading spreads. Generally, eight is the maximum I will put on a spread, even for group shots, because you don't want the spread to look too busy. And also it's a way of you know, earning extra revenue uh, moving forward. So yeah, just trying to think of immediate family, bridal party, all the families on one spread and then a bridal party on a separate spread. That way you should, you should earn some more revenue that way. That's um that's that's quite interesting really because obviously the one thing that we've always taught in the past is that even if you're just looking for that one shot, it's almost the opposite of what you said. But what I quite like about what you said is that you know the one thing that we would have remembered maybe is that massive everybody shot you know where you've gone up and you've gone to the roof of the hotel and you're shooting down. Yeah. That's an obvious one to me, but then you've just nailed it. If you think of them all, the key groups as spreads, and then you're charging and you're costing, you're never going to forget to do them. Uh, which no. I think is is you know is a, is a great way there. So I, I like that a lot as well. So brilliant. So there's some in you. So I'm just going to chip in with that, but ignore me. Do what Scott says. Um, <laughs> uh, and the other thing, and, and a bit of a plug for us really as well, is that if you haven't seen them already, but we you know we give away sort of lighting posing apps uh, on on the Photographer Academy. So there are wedding ones there. So they were really popular just to have on your phone and for a quick reminder just before you're about to get set up for a session, you know. Um, and Absolutely. when you've got that downtime on the wedding days when you're waiting for things to happen, you can give yourself a quick reminder. Brilliant. Exactly. Um, okay, so obviously right at the, before we got into the different types of light, we talked a lot about, you know, obviously natural light, which is fantastic. We're big fans of it. Um, we know that you've moved over to the Fuji cameras, mate. Do you have desired lenses? Somebody asked, do you have a particular go-to? They seemed quite nice and wide are you using one lens or are you using a few very yeah so yeah i mean I, I shoot completely on prime lenses uh i use two bodies on the wedding day and generally the camera on my right has got the longer lenses on so generally the 35 1.4 or the 56 1.2 and on my left hand side is generally the 16 mil 1.4 or the amazingly sharp 8 to 16 2.8 that is probably one of my favorite lenses that i'm shooting with at the minute when i moved from dslr uh, the 14 24 to 8 was the one lens I really, really missed. And thankfully, Fujifilm bought out an equivalent um, last November. And I bought it day one. It was, it's, an, it's so sharp. It's amazing, mate. I can't recommend it enough. Brilliant. Um, okay, brilliant. Uh, so you mentioned uh, about the road to light uh, that you've, you've, yes. yeah, you've just started using that. Um, are you finding it quite portable? They are pretty portable, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've got the, I've got the kit. I've got a suitcase, like a, uh, a flight case. They come in. I've got three lights, three light stands. They come with me in the back of the car at every single wedding, and they're really they're, they're, you can wheel them about. They're, they are heavy, but they are very, very portable. They're, they're very, very good to have and very handy in certain situations. Was uh, this isn't a question as such? The the shot that you showed, um, the big blue one with the big building and the bride in front of it, and you said you photoshopped yes. it. Yes. Was that the Cliffs Pavilion? No, that's actually the Opera House in Valencia. Oh, is the, have you shown something tonight from the Cliffs Pavilion? I have, yeah, that was the oh. couple in the, in the middle of the red seats. Yeah. Oh, so the, co the the comment was uh, the Chris Pavilion. Wow, I've never late made it. Look, I've never seen it look so good. So I guess that, <laughs> so I guess that was a compliment, mate. Excellent. I was, was, I, I was actually told I couldn't go in there, um, but I kind of the door was open, so I went in. Guys, I can I can always stress, always ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Yeah. Back. Okay. Gorilla, yeah, we know that. Gorilla photography. Yeah. <laughs> just play, yeah, play, yeah. Well, you haven't heard it here, but you have. Just play dumb and say sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, right. Uh, right I'm gonna crack on it. I'm, we'll, we'll go on. What's that, mate? Sorry. I said I was gonna crack on it and, and get going and, and say any questions. We'll, we'll do them at the end if you want. Is there any more now? Which... Uh, no, we've got some, but I think that they can hang on. To be honest. Uh... Okay. I mean, I've got another. You know. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so we can do some Q&A at the end. That's yeah, perfect. Go for it, mate. Go for it. 
Wicked. All right. So going back, guys, there are no excuses. I did a, I did a, um, a workshop uh, nearly two years ago now, um, and I was sold it as um, Greywood Hall. And I thought, oh, what's up there? Pontefract. That looks good. So I go, no, Essex, we used to have in venues like Gothwood Hall here and Down Hall, which I'm going to do quite a lot out. So I Googled Greywood Hall, and this came up. And I thought, fantastic. This is just up my street. It's, look at those windows. It's you know, obviously Edwardian, Georgian. I'm not... not She's not an architect major. Uh, I thought this would be perfect. So I drive four hours up to Pontefract, and that's what I turned up to. And I can almost hear you kind of going, oh my God, that's exactly what I said. So I put re put in the address for the sat nav, and it said, you are here. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to give a six hour, six hour talk today on how to shoot, and this is where I'm going to be shooting. So I just didn't panic. I thought, let's go inside. It can't look that bad. Guys, it looked that bad. It was it was this. It was just one big room. And that was pretty much what we shot. Forgive the fight, forgive the quality of the images there. But I looked, I thought about it and I looked at it and I used my uh, my mantra, light, location, concept, pose. So I found the light and we posed it. So the first shot we did was this image here. So again, we just used the light source here. Nice bit of balance there. We have obviously photoshopped myself out in the mirrors. Um, but again, I just kind of thought that's probably not a bad shot to, to open the, the, the workshop with. This was the second shot we did. So we put a reflector in the window just to kill the highlights because it was a very bright sunny day, believe it or not, judging by the first picture. So it's very, very hot on the dress and the skin there by her left hand side. So we just used a diffuser in the window just to kind of calm those highlights down a little bit more. But my favorite shot from the image from the, from the workshop was this shot here. Uh, this was used uh, with a low ID light. And again, exposing for the highlights and just really kind of dropping out everything in the background, but using the chandeliers to make it look like that the bride's been lit from that location. So no matter where you go, guys, no matter where you're shooting, no matter how much you're kind of thinking, oh, my God, there is nothing I can do here. Look for light. Think about the pose. Think about the location. Put the concept in and I, I can guarantee you, you will get successful results. So how do we pick the perfect location? This is uh, this is some befores and afters now of uh, of shots I've done very recently. So this is um, down in Devon, down at a place called Motherford's Court. So I shot the this is the wedding we shot last year, and I knew I saw this in, from the car park, and I thought, what on earth is that? I have no idea what that place was, but I knew looking at the the architecture, the symmetry there, and I thought this this is going to work. We can make something wonderful work here. So we used some ushers during some downtime. I moved the chairs off uh, either side and the packet of fertilizer in the bottom corner. And this was the shot we got there, guys. So again, I'm just trying to think in what can we get for the most unobvious situation? Now, trust goes a long way. I say to all of my couples, if you trust me, something great is going to happen. You just have to trust me. This was a, a location shoot that we did for Fuji Film back in November. This is an amazing house that we uh, that we had the privilege to, to photograph in. It's a privately owned house where the owner was an interior designer and I could, the stuff she had in here was just incredible. This staircase, again, I knew I wanted to make something work. The light here was amazing. I thought, how are we gonna make something work? And we're gonna go upstairs and photograph there. I saw the bride, I thought, actually stop, don't move. Spin round, turn and face the light. And that was the shot that we that we got from there. And again, we're using the, the leading lines in from the staircase into the bride. And again, she's just standing there, guys. This is just a, a soft pose, nice expression. But the whole shot works with, with the way that the um, the banisters kind of really looks like angel wings. Um, so, yes, this is one of my favorite shots I took last year on the same shoot. This was on the floor and I thought we have to get this involved. We cannot not get this involved and the again what I mentioned before the Fujifilm 8016 2.8 lens had just been released so I thought this is the perfect lens so I actually stood up on a, a Peli case I had one of the Fujifilm tech specialists holding my belt and I had to lean over using uh, my live view and the tilt screen and that's the shot that we got um, looking down on the bride there so obviously we strained it up in Photoshop but again, looking back, at, you know, th there's always something you can do here, guys. This is a car park in Cyprus that we photographed in a couple of years ago. Again, this is one of the only times where location kind of overrode, overrode, that's the word, <laughs> um, I overruled my looking for light first. I saw this and thought I like to shoot with frames within frames. 
And I said to the wedding planner, can I photograph here? She said, why would you want to photograph here? It's a car park. I said, look, I'm going to make something magical happen here. And she said, well, no one photographs here. The, the resort photographers normally go out the back and normally do this and normally do that. So well, that's exactly what I'm not going to do. This couple have paid a lot of money for me to come out and photograph their wedding. I want to give them something quite different on their wedding day rather than just a box standard photographs. And this is the shot that we got uh, from the car park in from there. So again, just stood back, used leading lines, used framing. Again, this is a wonderful spread on the wedding album. Again, negative space, selling spreads is, a, again, I'll keep saying it, it's a really good way of making money. And this is up on their wall. It's a really, a really you know, good example of making something work out of, you know, that's not, that shouldn't work really. This was back in September. Uh, this was a skylight that you can't just out a shot here. Um, you can probably see the light source at the top where the wooden beams are. So again, I loved, I, I did a bit of research on the venue and saw this, this wall. And I thought this is going to work really, really well. Um, to the left hand side, it just didn't work, but there was enough um, squares on the wall, on the wall paneling here to make it work. But there was this, this um, massive shard of light just coming through and I thought it's not going to work. I thought, you know what, let's use the light to my advantage. Let's make it work. So I placed the groom in front of the light, exposed for the highlights. And that's the shot that we ended up with. This is the shot, exactly the same location, guys. Again, exposed to the highlights. And there was enough play in the Fujifilm files to lift the shadows up to make it look fantastic. And again, this, this actually uh, got a silver distinction over at WPPI back in February. So I was really happy with this shot. That it, it, did, uh, it did really, really well. But probably my most um, well-known shot, and I think this is the one that Jay mentioned earlier, um, the photograph that won me first place at WPPI back in February, second at SWPP, first at the BIPP Awards, um, recently just gone, was actually taken on this mound of grass at the back of the venue. Um, and it just looks very nothing, doesn't it? Let's be honest, it's a dirt track around to where they, they, they put all the bottles once the wedding's all finished. Uh, but it's a really good way of kind of, you know, you, me shooting low, putting the bride up high, and get exposing for the shadows. So I wanted to drop the sky out a little bit. Thankfully, it was a little cloudy. So this is the location, guys. And that's the shot that we got at that location. As I said, this is the one that has done very well, probably my most awarded image um, I've ever taken, to be fair. And, you know, again, it was absolutely chucking down with rain at this point. And I said to the bride, I've got an idea. Do you trust me? And she said yes. So there was myself and one of the bridesmaids. We came out and we held the dress up and we made the shot work. And I said, this is I think this will be a good. I think you're going to like it. And um, they have a copy of this you know, DigiLab. Uh, TPS had a massive print of this on their stand. They gave me the print as a thank you, and I gave the print to the bride as a thank you for trusting me. So, you know, always explain to your bride that I've got a really good idea. Do you trust me? This is a shot, as I said earlier, this was a test shot from one of the images we did earlier. Um, and uh, this, this the result is obviously, obviously that. Now, outside, there was a staircase. I was having a, a, a cup of coffee, and I thought, that staircase is going to work. Wasn't sure how it was going to work. So I just did a couple of test shots um, with a couple of my colleagues at Fujifilm and we just, you know, had a, we just arsing around basically. And I, met, I got the crop, I knew how I wanted to work. And then this was the shot we finished up with at the end of it. And it was, again, this is a lovely, lovely shot. This is obviously a, a model shoot. It's not a real wedding day, but this would make a lovely spread in the wedding album. Again, if I was selling it as a, as a, as a, uh, as a wedding book. Now this this shot actually won me um, Natural World Photographer of the Year at SWPP in January. This is actually a test shot, and I called it test shot as well in the in, in the competition because uh, it, it it was a test shot. So the shot this is the Sycamore Gap up in uh, Northumberland. It's Hadrian's Wall. I always wanted to photograph up here. So again, this is this is where location overruled light. I wanted to photograph here, and I wanted the right bride and the right groom. This, this was a post wedding shoot. This is not on the wedding day, guys. So it's only entered into post-wedding categories if I enter it into competition. Again, it merited at WPPI and did quite well at SWPP. And this was the final shot that we did. So again, just exposing for the highlights. I wanted to really drop out all the shadows in the area from here. Again, I'm, the bride and groom looked a little bit lost just standing there. So I gave them some umbrellas. Maybe I've got a thing of umbrellas, who knows? Uh, but I gave them some umbrellas to give some context and get, so you saw them a lot easier. Uh, and it, so, yeah, it's just exposed for the highlights. And it's, I think this beautiful, it's, 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 it's definitely for me a bucket list photograph. 
I've wanted to photograph here since I first saw Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves back in 1991. And I thought that's a cool location. And I finally got to photograph it in October. So massive box tick for me. This is in uh, the Mandalay Bay. This is during one of my um, super classes at WPPI. This is where everyone had a cigarette. This was the only allocated smoking area in the entire Mandalay Bay outside area. You can see the guy there, Packet of Marlborough uh, on the phone there. Um, I was walking around doing a recce and I thought, this is going to work. This is a really cool location. So again, I asked the guy to move. I said, look, guy, can I just please ask you to move just the left hand side? I've got a really good idea for a photograph. I put the model halfway up the stairs and that was the shot that we got in from there. And it was just it's a nice shot. Again, did quite well here at FWPP, not as well at WPPI. Um, but, you know, it's a great shot. She loves it. I love it. Again, make something out of nothing, guys. Don't walk past and say, I can't photograph someone there. If the light's right, you can photograph someone there. And again, this is uh, inside the Mandalay Bay. Again, there was actually only breastfeeding on this couch. And I've got to become very good friends with her ever since. Um, we, her husband is a very successful photographer in San Diego. Didn't know it at the time. Um, we've say so we're good friends. I actually had the privilege to judge with them at, at WPPI back in February. But I saw this location, saw the light, saw the reflection. Now my initial idea was to use the reflection on the floor, but we just couldn't get it to work. So I just changed my idea, changed my concept and got my groom to sit down, move the chair, the couch to the left hand side a little bit. And that was the finished shot there. And that was what we did um, at WPPI. Again, using the frame within a frame, within a frame, nice pose, it's good expression. Again, I, I didn't want to completely drop out the the, uh, the background, but I thought the groom was just standing out enough to so not distracted by the the, uh, the palm trees and the hotel in the, in the background. So that's my part of the uh, the webinar done as far as that's concerned, guys. You can find me here. This is my Instagram and Facebook. If you want to email me any questions, please feel free to do so. Uh, I'm quite friendly, um, so please don't think I'm not going to answer my emails. I always answer anyone's email as we uh, as we go from there. But what I'm talk about now is is, is Fundy software and how I apply Fundy software into into my workflow. So here, what we have is going to shut that down. Hopefully, Jay, you can still see my screen now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wicked. So within the Fundy software, we can actually have the ability to use magazines. Um, and magazines I actually use as my as my brochures. So my lab prints the magazines for me. Graphic Studio, they print all my magazines for me. And I use again how I'm talking about selling spreads and thinking about how I'm photographing when I'm hitting the shutter and I'm telling the story and I'm using different kind of shots there. And again, we're just going to go through it in from here. So nice cover shot. Again, I've thought about uh, on the wedding day, cover shot logo, frame with you no know, images into here, all around here, and a couple of place perfectly in the center of the of the frame here. And again, when I'm talking about um, spreads, this would be a spread here. It's a beautiful wedding we shot back in October. And again, I thought this was a great center page spread. So again, nice negative space. I thought about it, and you can put text in, you can you know, put all your classics in, you can put all your, you can totally design it, you can drop shadow, you can, I can never want to go into here and change the opacity, then I can do that. We're taking completely out. It's a really good bit of software to be able to play with and make your magazines look absolutely, absolutely perfect. And again, you can really tell the story of the wedding day. And again, spreads, spreads here, spread image there, spread image there so if you're photographing for spreads guys you, you you're going to make a ton more money that way and i believe that using fundy software for your albums and magazines is a really good way of increasing your revenue um my goal is always to upsell at least the cost of my albums for the entire year so technically my albums are free because i'm not selling enough that they're more than paying for my my album bill uh, every year at Gaffy Studio. So I cannot stress enough, sell spreads, guys. You're going to make a ton, ton more money. Have we got any questions there, Joe? We do, mate. We do, absolutely. Um, Brilliant. Mate, so, but what I want to touch on quickly, I know we've just sort of glazed over um, this magazine maker within Fundy, uh, and we're not going to do any, we don't need to do a hard sell for Fundy because it speaks for itself, really. But what I loved when I when they showed me this back at TPS this year, obviously, when we when last time I saw you face to face uh, as well, yeah, was. 
the the beauty I, I don't think what we've touched on enough is is the the beauty of it as as a sales tool so you know no. we're, we're in this digital age and two things tonight that have really struck a chord and it's something that you know that we teach is the album for a start the physical product you know we've got so lost in this digital age where you know that the printed media is, is is you know we're bringing it back to the forefront and it should be but when i saw these magazines and and it was fundy that showed me the designer and then they had some printed on their stand you know from i think it was from graphic because it was right next to the graphic studio lounge that's right yeah um i uh, mark and i both went brilliant you know we we constantly with experience are producing uh, literature and designs and brochures for the experience group all day, and we will absolutely be doing that for experience wedding groups as well but as a sales tool to be able to give that to your customer that physical product will will stand you above the rest um and you know you you can confess i know we've touched on it today but you can knock this up in next to no time that's the beauty of yeah it. i mean I, if you want i can just literally i can add and let me just add this some quickly on onto here if you can see my my screen still you literally just kind of throw it on and it's there straight away. It's there and you can add your text in. And if I want to you know, double page spread, we throw that one into there. I can still tell the story and go bang, bang, bang and throw that into there. And then you can go into the actual software and change the layout. If you want that image over there, you change it. That one up there, you change it. This one you want double click. This one you can take out and it goes to full page. It's as quick as that. And I knock this out and I'm not exaggerating in about an hour and a half. Yeah, you know, in the days of using layers and layers in Photoshop and layers and layers in InDesign or however you used to design your magazines or albums, those days are gone. Fundy software is by far and away the maximum software that you can, you know, minimize your time on the computer and maximize your time for what you should actually be doing, which is running your business and taking pictures. Absolutely. I mean, and obviously we, ha I'm sure you've got the gist of it already, but those of you who may not have joined us before on any of these webinars, you know, this is just one feature that the magazine production is one part of the Fundy suite. I mean, ultimately yeah. it's an album design software and it's phenomenal. When we discovered it before they were even involved with us, Mark, one of those light bulb moments, a lot like Animoto when we found their video software, mm. he said, this is going to change our work and our workflow. And it does, you know, it is about speed. As you said, mate, we want to be shooting and doing more product, uh, more shoots, more weddings. Absolutely. More trace, whatever. Absolutely. Um, and, and this is an absolute game changer and it's worth every single penny of it. So that's the hardest sell we're going to give you for it tonight. You can get, <laughs> you know, as much as we've got $100 off, you can get a free trial. So if, if you do nothing else tonight, go to fundydesigner.com, download the free trial. The only thing you can't do is I don't think you can export on the free trial, but just go and check it out for yourselves. Don't take our word for it. Check it out. But of course, if it is for you, then don't forget you get $100 off on that. Mate, uh, brilliant. Look, I've got loads of questions for you, so let's hit them. Um, let's do I was it. Asked, uh, you were absolutely right. What was my favorite image? The one you said, the, the umbrella. However, <laughs> I've seen an image today that is a very, very close second. Um, is it? Yeah, yeah. That image of uh, in the, the the bride lying down in in the pattern on the in the house. Oh, yeah. the, the the bullseye one. Yeah, yeah. yeah it kind of was... struck a chord because it reminded me of Westworld. You know, I'm a sci-fi geek, and it reminded me of yes, the yes, West yes. Uh, Westworld logo. But that was a a, gr a great one image. Love that, mate. I hadn't seen that one before, uh, but it still is t tipped by that 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 um, that bridey shot is phenomenal. I love it. Um, but on top of that, that, we've got one of our experienced members online with us, Anne, and she said, Jay, which is your favorite? Because I've loved them all. So there you go. Oh, good. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Very kind. Thank you. Uh, but seriously, man, I mean, I think what's been beautiful about tonight's uh, episode, uh, tonight's webinar, is, I mean, I know you and I know you work, but I've seen a lot of images tonight. That before and after was a real eye opener. So, you know, it's really important because a lot of people will just kind of think, well, oh, it's, it's great, but he's, he's got all these amazing venues. Guys, I'm just like everyone else. I go to rubbish venues too sometimes. It's just making the very best out of what you think is a bad situation by looking for light. And you can make some really, you can make magic happen if you just think about things a little bit differently. Uh, I think this will actually, well, it's quite apt that I asked this question. I'm just going a little bit out of sync, but just because I've spotted it in uh, before we get to the others. Um, so with regards to the venues, I think you touched on it. Where you can, do you visit beforehand? I try not to, if I'm honest, um, because I used to. Uh, yes, I used to. But what I found is a venue that I shot near me called Calling Castle. And it's down in Kent, beautiful venue. I went to do a recce and the day we, we recce it was beautiful. I had all these great ideas in my head. And the day of the wedding, it absolutely chucked it down. And all the ideas I had went out the window and I panicked. I think, right now, what do I do? So now 
generally I'll take a venue on face value because I can prepare I, I can prepare and use the skill set that I've got looking for light on the day and say right this is what we got to do and this is what how we're going to make today work rather than have all these ideas and expectations and not be able to exceed my expectations because the weather you know, plays up so generally the answer to that is probably not anymore now I don't recce I think there's a difference there, though. I don't think you've just touched on it. I think it's the fact that you know you've you've trained you know you've trained your eye, which is a good thing. Obviously, you've been doing it for a while yeah. now. And I think, um, uh, from my point of view, and I think that was a really valid comment, though, on how you got there on the day, and it was a completely different day. So I think you've got somewhere. Uh, you, you're all going to be different now. All of you that have joined us tonight, you're going you're to look at things completely different just from this hour that you've spent with Scott, because you'll be looking. I hope so. You'll be looking for the extraordinary out of the ordinary. You'll look at, you'll look 360. I mean, that was one of the first tips that you know when I started working with Mark, which feels like a lifetime ago, which it probably was. <laughs> was he, you know, the first thing he said is, "Look behind you. Don't look. Don't you know? Just don't don't get fixated. You know, look around you." Yeah. don't take the first thing that's obvious and and i think you know if nothing else we should challenge you all to do that just to, when you're out and about look look for the uh, you know the, the what could be the different in in the ordinary if you like in that and you've proved Absolutely. That. brilliant brilliant uh right let's get into these questions mate so um when you walk when you work not sorry i think it's been worded wrong but when you work through the groups um and you do need to use some kind of off camera flash or uh, well uh, the question is on camera flash or off camera flash i guess uh, no flash at all. Not even if if the weather's against you for groups. Not even no, not even. Again, I find a pocket of light that's consistent, and again, I expose for the shadows and lift everything else out from there. So I haven't put a flash gun on uh, a camera for group shots in about five years. So generally, I'll just use off camera. Uh, sorry, no flash whatsoever. No, none, none at all. I mean, it, I mean, it's obvious, and don't get me wrong. We clearly, you know, there from the presentation just tonight, I mean, we know that you love natural light and so do we all yeah uh, and you know we've got a golden rule here which i think is the same for you it's you know natural light before reflector reflectable or for yeah reflector before flash and flash the only flash time i'll put a flash gun on is generally if the cake cutting is done and it's particularly dark i might put the flash gun on for for that but generally that's the only time it comes out of the bag and that's that i'm with my hand on my heart that's the only time it comes out of the bag for the cake cut um, I think it was really interesting when we're talking about, and I made a note actually to, to bring it up, uh, um, you know, when you're talking about the reflectors, you know, it should be, you know, mm. in everybody's bag. Yes, obviously the white dress is a perfect one. But I mean, you know, for us, uh, uh, we, you know, the, the, the Laster lights are so lightweight and collapsible and not just that, all of any company making them now, um, it would be foolish not to have a, you know, medium sized reflector. Totally agree. And they're so cheap. They're 60, 70 quid. And just stick it in the back of your bag because you never know when you're going to need it. Exactly. And they can, they're, they're no weight in them whatsoever. And then even if you yeah. haven't got an assistant, you can get a bridesmaid, an usher or whatever it is. Um, somebody, you know, in the groups will help you out, uh, without a doubt. So yeah, kind of a, an essential really. Um, Right, so I've done that one. Let's just move down them. Um, do you have, so for bride and groom? Do you, uh, for their, their particularly their portraits? Do you have a preferred time of day, um, or does it depend on on the time of the wedding? I guess really. Uh, time of the wedding, I suppose. I mean, generally, I take them straight after they've got married because if, if you let them chat to their wedding guests, you, you're never going to pull them away. So generally, I've got them as a, they, they come down the aisle first. They'll get a glass of champagne and say, "Right, guys, let's nip off now and do, and do your pictures." This time of year. You know, July and August, April and May, into September, I will generally, I might wait and do them afterwards because the light is so beautiful um, around half six, seven o'clock. I have like, the wedding I shot on Sunday. I actually said, guys, we're doing the group shots after dinner. I said, oh, I respectfully, you know, enjoy dinner, but maybe have one less glass of wine than you think because we don't need to look squiffy during, during the pictures. But the light was just beautiful. Again, I backlit them. Uh, beautiful golden hour, exposed for the shadows, and it looked amazing. So never be afraid to do group shots if the light is right. I mean, it, most photographers will get that done before the meal. Do not be afraid to try it afterwards, but just maybe just pre-warm the couple to maybe go easy on the glass of red. <laughs> Excellent, love it. Um, I thought this was a nice question, and it came. There was a similar one that I've deleted because it was similar. Uh, obviously, we've talked. Well, you've talked quite a bit tonight about, uh, and you said right at the beginning about getting involved in the awards uh, and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, what we probably didn't touch on, obviously, is that you know. They've, the specific questions of what awards we're we referring to. So obviously maybe somebody's new to the game. So obviously we know and we've heard tonight that you're very active with the SWPP and the WPPI. 
Um, so it's, it's these kind of things that you're obviously a member of uh, and obviously you're entering. Yes, yeah, I'm a member of um, the association. So I'm a member of the British Institute of Professional Photography, the SWPP and uh, WPPI and the Guild of Photographers as well. I'm, a member, I'm an active member of the Guild and I judge for, I judge for all four. So I, I'm an active print judge now. So I'm, my time for entering competitions is, is coming to an end almost where I'm, I'm now evolving into, into a print judge. So it's time to start giving back to the industry that I love so much. But definitely if you want to progress, there's no better way of entering into a print comp or an online competition. The Guild SWPP do online competitions once a month. Uh, SWPP is free of charge and you can enter there and you get feedback if you want to get feedback. And it's a really good way of learning on how to maybe improve your images for competition. But the, but the, the, the overall thing is what a judge looks for and what a client looks for are often very differently. So don't change your style of pictures just to suit a judge because they're not the ones paying your bills. Yeah, agreed. And obviously, and you've mentioned tonight as well, which was interesting for me, because obviously, you know, you were talking about which particular, we won't go into them, but which particular ones that you've won and then in particular places where you've come second. So, and, and yes. my first question was, well, there's no way that should be set. And I'm not, I'm not just because of my friend, you know, uh, and, that, and, I, and I love you, yeah. this, but you know what I mean? It, the, the question there is, is, well, you know, I'm in it, you know, and we get this with, even with our photo critiques, it's like, you know, what, You've told me that's in top five, but you, or, or I'm just outside of the top ten. But why, isn't it? And it, you've just touched on it, really. However, we all see things quite different, even though they're all qualified judges. Yeah. They all see something different, and it, it's interesting. I know you do a lot of it. If you've never been to like a uh, you know a training day, a print competition training day, I know the SWPP do them, and I think the Guild do them as well. But to see the judges and what they you know, how they deliberate and how they talk about and how, how they dissect the images, it's quite interesting to see the different points of view. So. A, a, a shameless plug: I'm doing a four-hour masterclass at the SWPP convention with Terry Jones in January on on judging exactly how that four yeah. hours on you know, mini judging school. So if you want to come on board, guys, it'd be great to have you on and, get, and it really open again without being patronized and opening your eyes up to, to what we're looking for and, and what goes into being a it's, an, it's an absolutely you know massive insight really i mean obviously uh, like yourself mark is a qualified judge um in the uk and the us um uh, and for years and, he, and he's very proud of that and of course we apply that you know to the photographer academy and the experience group and that's all we really do it with now but um you know when i physically came on board with him officially 10 years ago albeit i've worked with him a lot longer than that you know, as much as I'm not a qualified judge, you know, myself and, and Mark's wife, Debbie, you know, he took us through all the training because he wanted those extra pair of eyes and he want, and to yeah. some extent, even with our staff in the, in the design room and in the, in the creative room, they've all been through that way as Mark as well, because they, he wants them to see what he sees. He doesn't mean we yeah. can't disagree with him. We, we've had, uh, the, the deliberations here where, um, you know, we've not agreed on a winning image for a competition of ours. Um, but as long as the argument is valid, we will listen to everybody, you know, and it's key that. So it's really important. So, yeah, if you get this, really like I said, if Scott's doing it in January at the SWBP, uh, yeah, I would strongly recommend going and checking it out. Brilliant. So we've done that one. Excellent. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a shameless plug for the Academy. If nothing else, you know, we do a monthly photo critique on the Photographer Academy, which you can upload a single image to each month for free. So get the judges, get Mark's feedback on your images, see where you are. Absolutely. And it's the, the best way, the best way of learning. If you want to join us tomorrow, there's another one tomorrow. So, but you do need to be a member, but you can just join at the basic level to, to get an image in. But you can watch the critiques for free if you're not a member as well. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, brilliant. The way, have I got it right? Yeah. So, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Me and the family watched that last week. So when I saw that image today, I thought that was hilarious. It reminded me straight. <laughs> Plus thinking, yeah, I want to do that shot as well. Not with people in it, but we all want to do that shot. Um, yep. But the question that came in about it, apart from it being a great shot, which it is, I can, I'm, th I'm thinking, I'm wishing that it's Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman in the shot line, not, not the Brighton Green. It's not. I wish it was, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> um, how did you communicate with the Bride and Groom? I thought that was a great question. Uh, I have walkie talkies. Excellent. Walkie talkies. I have, so I uh, did a shot recently, uh, that shot as well. Um, I did a location shoot in Venice. Now, if I'm about four or five bridges away, I'll put a walkie talkie uh, in the bride or the groom's pocket, I tell them to leave it on, and I pose them for a walkie talkie. Uh, there's one as a shot I did recently on Beachy Head down in Sussex. You go on my Instagram page, you'll see it on there. And again, I'm probably you know, maybe a quarter of a mile away uh, and I've got a long lens on and I'm communicating via walkie-talkies. They're brilliant. Honestly, it's just a good way of doing things. I'm sure it's not the case, but tell me that they're like geeky transformer kids ones or something like that. 
Uh, they're not, unfortunately. Oh, I've gone for map them before they shut down. <laughs> so <laughs> close, but yes. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> love it. Brilliant. Um, right. Where am I? Where am I? I've lost track now. I love working with you, mate. Let's have a go. Right. Uh, hi, Scott. Maybe it's me. I'm an older photographer, but the images of your couples seem quite small within the photograph. Is that just part of your style or how? I th well, that's a good question. Let's see what you say. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you look at you, you, you can still see my screen, right? You can still see my magazine. Yeah, yeah. So the the shots that I showed you in the keynote, they would be what I would enter for awards. So though that's what some, that's my stylized portraiture. But if you're seeing the shots on the magazine, you can see that I'm filling the frame. The couples have got nice expressions. It's what I said you know, a couple of minutes ago. From what a judge looks for, then what a client looks for is very, very different. So you have to appeal to both and know that the right time and when to appeal to the right person. So it's in the magazine, I'm put into a bride. They don't want to see long distance shots. I've got a couple in here because I like to shoot it. But generally, if the magazine images that I'm photographing here, you can see that all, so the shots here, this for example, all full frame, nice images there, nice couple portraits. Um, moving through here, destination engagement shoot. So again, nice signature shot there. But again, we're just using everything to our advantage and this is how we're doing our shots on a wedding day so yeah it, it's it's a way of you know knowing exactly when you're shooting for awards and when you're shooting so shoot for show and shoot for dough it's the age old term and it's knowing when to do both and i think as well which is a nice point and I, I think you did touch on it but only subtly in the conversations i know we've talked about spreads and albums and how we can increase it by shooting for that which is brilliant uh, but you've also yes. mentioned a couple of times about wall art as well so these are the kind of absolutely the kind of these bigger images are the kind of ones that they're absolutely buying as well aren't they mate that's right yeah so again i use uh use the, the um the wall art ips in within fundy and you can actually put a picture up on someone's wall they can send you a picture of their of their living room they measure something within that image and it scales everything to size so you can say well i think in that wall space you ideally want a 30 by 40 not a 24 by 16 because again it's a way of upselling your your wall art from there by using fundy software it's a really it's a really powerful tool it's not just albums you can make a lot of money from this software i, th I think that was i think that was key i mean we touched on it earlier and i know i've talked about it within the experience group but you know this the, getting away from this whole digital era and we are changing businesses in their sales methods and it's not even a hard sell you know we bring in the album back um, but people will automatically just worry about selling that album or that package but they forget about the wall art and you touched on it even with the, the Robin Hood shot you know you said that was a, a post-wedding shoot right so it was uh, yeah you know, so you're looking at your packages there um, and you know let's face it I mean I know it's as part of your magazine spread but you know if that was me and Mel I'd want that on my wall you know that yeah. that would that would be absolute. We would both want that on our wall because that would mean more to us than you know a close up of I mean I know what I look like. Mel knows what she looks like. <laughs> um, you know, and we're not bothered about that. But that's what we would have on our wall. We yes, we'd want it in the album, but that would be you know massive on our wall to remember our day. And we must remember these things. These tools are here for us to design, yeah. but they're also there to make us money in our sales room. So you know we're really absolutely ambassadors that right couple only a couple of questions left mate and we can get you to your oh you can't be here because you're, you're driving Aha, but you I'm can in. get to another cold <laughs> one let's have a look right um given that your style has uh, shown oh so given your style how many images do you, how many images do you normally shoot on a wedding day do you think um i would say if it's just me anywhere between 1500 and 2000 images uh, per wedding day and we get that down to about half of what we take. I double tap a lot of obviously for eyes and expressions. I double tap a lot on group shots. Okay. But typically, you know, if I've come home and taken more than 20, no, 2000, it's been a good day or a long day. Yeah. Uh, but ideally, anywhere between 1500 and 2000 is what I would typically shoot on a wedding day. If it's me, myself, and Abs, who works for me, second shooting between the pair of us, and you know, a couple, you know, probably 2000 each, um, and we cut it down to again about half of what we actually take that the couples get to see. And a second part to that question, um, are you using a light meter or are you metering in camera? Metering in camera. Uh, I do I do shoot film every now and again. I've got two reflects and a Leica, which sometimes come out on a wedding day, but not often. Uh, but generally, I meter in camera. Again, the, 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 the Fujifilm in camera metering is just phenomenal. Um, so I trust it implicitly to, to do what I need to do. Fabulous. Uh, oh, I think you just touched on this, but oh no, you mentioned that uh, Abs was your second shooter. Do you take an assistant as well, yeah. or do you technically ask for people to help you? 
Um, I've always taken you no know, this time of year when kids are out finishing school, I always get inundated emails of people want to come out and, and help, which is great. Um, typically it's just myself that shoots. If Abs comes out, he is he is, is you no know, out as a second photographer, a second angle on, on the wedding day. But generally, again, I I, I generally take no um uh, I, I pack quite lightly, so everything I need's on me. So I have my 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 light in my top pocket, my lenses are on a belt. I've got a hold fast money maker strap so both cameras are on me at all times. So generally I, I've got everything there. If I need help, I'll generally go and ask an usher. But you know, the point of me having an assistant just to carry bags and reflectors are, are are gone. So it's just me now. Yeah, it's just me on me on me Todd. Bro. On a wedding day. Um I'm not sure I'm reading this right. Two seconds. Do you ask people That's all right. what far away shot they would like in the car? Oh, okay. So I think this is staying on the on the the idea of you know the the distance shots. We've t t talked about the, the Robin Hood shot, and then you said about mm -hmm. cliffs and that. Is that something that you would normally discuss uh, pre wedding in the conversations? No, it's it's something that um, I I will say on a post shoot definitely. I I will pitch to the right couple again. I only did two or three a year, um, so I've got a location in mind. And I will pitch to the couple. Are you up for it on a wedding day? I just ask the couples to trust me. And again, I'll say, you know, if you trust me, guys, we'll make something magical happen. I have an idea in my head and, you know, I'll be miles away. I'll, I'll bring the walkie-talkies out and I'll, I'll get them to do something and show them. They go, oh, my God, that's amazing. And it's just about having trust. And uh, But, again, the, the way the website and my Instagram feed is people are expecting that type of shot. I'm showing what I want to shoot. And that's really, really important for my brand. Brilliant. Mate, well, look, I you know, I always love it when you're online with us, but I really have loved tonight. It's easy for me to say, but I have because I saw a lot of images that I hadn't seen before, apart from my favourite. But now I have a second favourite. So. <laughs> uh, but no, from me to you, thanks, man. I mean, obviously, we'll, it's a pleasure, mate. We'll, um, we'll, Anytime. We'll be doing uh, more of them, I'm sure, with the affiliation that you have with Fundy, as we do on that. 